Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another Ask Sarah. Um, I feel like I haven't done this in a little while here and I wanted to film for you guys and you always have some crazy questions so <laughs> I figured we'd do an Ask Sarah. Um, if you don't know what Ask Sarah is, it's basically like an advice series uh, and you can email me any question, comment, story, whatever you got, you can send it to asksaravargas at gmail.com and that's where I pull all of these uh, questions and stories and everything, that's where I pull them all from. So let's hop in. Actually, let me scroll. I haven't, I usually do it like pretty much blind, so let me scroll and see what you guys have to say. And while we're just here, don't forget you can subscribe to this channel, it's free 99, like I don't know why you wouldn't do it. And follow me on Instagram, you know, I'm like over there. And Snapchat, Snapchat is where I'm at every single day, that's where you can catch me for sure. Instagram, I'm there pretty often. Twitter, I'm there too if you guys want to like holler at me and actually talk to me, you can talk to me on Twitter. Maybe on Instagram, I don't know, it depends, it depends on the day. This one just has like a good title, so we're gonna we're just gonna jump in with this one. Like I said, I haven't read it yet. So, hey Sarah, the other day my boyfriend and I were just ha starting to have sex, and all of a sudden I felt him trying to push himself into my other hole. Your other hole. Now he'd done this several times before. First of all, that's rude as hell. Um, but I just regarded them. I disregarded them as him not really looking, and hence getting confused or just teasing. I, I doubt it because I've talked to him before about anal sex and he knows I'd rather never ever do it. Personal preference. Cool. Even though he's told me that he would really like to do it, but this time it was different. He was above me and really trying to push it in. He didn't. And of course I was practically yelling at him to please stop, but he only, this is getting like cringy fast, man. Like no one should ever be doing anything to you that you don't want them to do, especially if he already like explicitly knows that that's not something that you want to do. There are words for that, but he only did it. Uh, okay, so when he, oh, he only stopped when he saw that she started crying. Great. After this, he just put his clothes back on and didn't say another word to me. I tried, hell no, he's trying to make you feel bad. I tried explaining to him that I'd gotten scared because he wouldn't stop and that was the reason I started to cry but he only got angry at me for making a big fuss about it. I shouldn't have started with this one. This is going to get me all mad. Okay. Now I got lost. Uh, sorry, I just, this is, wow. Okay, and then he left to his own house. Next day he uh, is speaking to me as if nothing had happened and hasn't apologized. How does he not realize he hurt me emotionally and broke a little bit of my confidence towards him? Does he not care? Clearly, clearly, clearly. We've been dating for one and a half years and I know that he can be really cold sometimes, but I also know that he loves me because he has shown this to me. I'm just hurt because I didn't expect him to try to force himself on me. I know this is long enough, but I just want to say I love your videos and all your advice. I think you're a great person and a great example of self-love and positive, positive, <laughs> positive body image. Love you, hugs from Central Australia. Central Australia? <laughs> Central America. I'm all off, you guys. Uh, okay. So this happens in relationships, right? Sometimes you guys don't see eye to eye on things. That being said, let it be clear that no one should ever, ever, ever do anything to you whether you're married to them or you're dating them or you've been together for five years or five minutes, whatever. No one should ever do anything to you that you don't want done to you. And it seems as though he was already aware that that's not something that you want. And to the man, you ain't slick. That's just not slick and it hurts like a mother if you decide to just try to do that out of nowhere. That shit hurts and if that's what you want, okay, because listen, a lot of us are better there. We better, we know that, right? And <laughs> like accidentally, I mean. And that can be ridiculously painful and can cause harm to the other person. I don't know if you're just an idiot and you don't understand that. But one way to not get your partner to try new things, especially to try anal with you, is by forcefully shoving your way in, you stupid, stupid man. You stupid, stupid. I can't even answer this question. 
He's trying to make you feel bad for his dumbassery. It's not your fault. He shouldn't be doing anything to you that you don't want done to you. Okay? It's really that simple. It doesn't matter how long you guys been together. It doesn't matter if he says he loves you or whatever. Who cares? It doesn't matter. That's not what should be happening and you shouldn't be putting up with that. You need to have an actual conversation with this fool. Man, I can't even keep talking about this. I don't think I've ever been this pissed off by an email before. I'm gonna move it along. If you guys have advice for this person, I'm not mad at like the person that emailed me clearly, but I'm mad at the situation and the fact that you would even think like for a second that that was okay or feel bad about it. Like you feel kind of bad about it because he's an idiot and he, you know what? Like I said, I gotta move on. I gotta move on from this one. If you guys have any uh, comments comments here for the little dumb fuck then feel free to leave them down below see and i try to cuss less but then dumbass stuff like this happens and then i just start cussing because i don't know how to use my words <sighs> oh girl that's like 12 years long i can't read that one in a video the more concise you guys can be the better chance it is that i can actually answer it in a video um don't get me wrong i read them but like when they're really long i can't answer those in videos Fat girls are more to love, right? Can be. My name's Whoops. Blank blank. Beep 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 beep. Back it up. My name's blankety blank and I'm 19 years old. I'm gonna cut to the chase. Girl, thanks. I'm a big girl with plenty of love to give. My ex-boyfriend was skinny and handsome and he made me feel like it was okay to be how I am and unfortunately he cheated on me. Womp, womp, womp. Now I'm 19 and terrified to be in any sort of relationship. Man, don't let some one dumb person scare you off from relationships. Like chances are you're gonna get in another one at some point because you're 19 and you're 19 and you know just you're 19 so there's a very good likelihood that it's gonna happen for you again um you know assuming you continue to live and boys find me attractive in pictures but when it's time to hang out i always chicken out out of fear of rejection i'm just lonely and done being afraid thanks there was no question there <laughs> was there was there a question that i missed the question there was no question, but okay. I feel like a lot of people kind of feel like this though I'm just gonna pick a part of this out and answer and respond to that I should say boys find me attractive in pictures, but when it's time to hang out I always chicken out I noticed that you didn't say like boys always find me attractive in pictures But then like in person they really think I'm like super ugly You didn't say that you said that they find me attractive and then what you said was but I don't find myself attractive so you're telling me you know um you're a big girl with plenty of love to give, but you're not saying like, I'm a big girl and I feel good about myself. So I think, you know, disregard the dumb boyfriend or whatever who cheated on you. Like, you don't need that kind of, you don't need that kind of negativity in your life, right? You really don't. The only negativity I feel like I really need in my life is when I go to the doctor and she'd be like, girl, the HIV test was hella negative. And I'm like, yeah, high five. That's the only negativity I need in my life, okay? That's it. You don't need any other kind of negativity in your life, especially somebody cheating on you for, I mean, you just don't need that. I've been there a bazillion times, unfortunately, and it, you just, eventually, you're gonna meet somebody, if you want to, if you're supposed to, you're gonna meet someone, and they're not gonna treat you that way, and life is gonna be much better. But it seems like your actual issue, even though you didn't ask a question or necessarily pinpoint it in this email, seems like your issue is how you feel about yourself, and obviously I can't totally cover all of that in one little segment, but I got a whole video series dedicated to it, along with basically every freaking video that I have on this channel. Except for the one about the toothbrush, shout out to the people that watched the toothbrush video. Truth be told, I really like the toothbrush and I think it's so cool that you can click it in there. And people were talking about like, you know when you flush the toilet, there's poop particles and I don't leave my toothbrush out anymore. So I tested it and you can click the lid onto the toothbrush and still stick it to the mirror. And then it's still out in the open, but it's covered for all you people afraid of toilet particles or whatever. I don't know. There was a lot of you guys talking about that and I was like, wow, I never, never seen people converse about this, but here we are. YouTube bringing people together. Herpes. That's what it's called. Someone recently, I have had a life changing event. Oh, so, I can't even read. Somewhat recently, I've had a life changing event. Okay, I feel like this is gonna be like a good topic considering what's going on with uh, Ursher Baby and all of the scandal surrounding that. My son's father was very abusive in many ways and I ended up contracting 
contracting, contracting, I'm not sure why I can say that, contracting herpes from him. I trusted him and he ruined my life. We're obviously not together anymore and I want to believe I can still find love in the future, but I'm scared no one will accept this. What's your advice in handling this in relationships in the future? Do you think I should give up hope uh, that it will be impossible to be with someone again? I would never want to hide it. Oh, you shouldn't. Don't, don't, don't. I'm glad you don't want to. You should not. And not give someone the choice that I never had. That, that's like a really adult way to view things. So you said that your life is ruined and I like, I like to be relatable but I am not living with herpes and so I can only be as relatable as I can be, right? So I'm gonna be someone who, I guess take my advice with a grain of salt is the point that I'm trying to get here. Um, I don't think it ruins your life. It's really an outlook. It's how you choose to view the things that happen in your life. You know, a lot of us go through hard things and um, a lot of people are living with different things that obviously they wouldn't choose to live with those things, whether it be an STD or um, any number of other diseases or other hardships, just different things that they have going on in their lives that they would have never wanted. They would have never chosen that for themselves. Um, but I don't want you to look at it as though your life is ruined. Herpes is actually incredibly common. Um, that's, you know, that's how you ended up with it because your partner ended up with it because his partner ended up with it because, you know what I mean? Like, it's really common. It's obviously not something that you would want to willingly um, contract, but it happens to a lot of people. And so first of all, with that, I would say, you never know, you might meet someone else that already has herpes. And that might end up being something that is a little bit easier to deal with than you anticipated. Um, you might also meet someone that is okay with it, that's uh, able to accept what it is and to take the precautions that you need to take so that your partner doesn't contract it from you. I mean, you can have a healthy, loving relationship while one of you is living with an incurable STD and the other is not. I mean, it's a possibility. It's definitely something that you will be able to do if you have two mature enough adults who are willing and who have reason to make that relationship work. Um, I can understand. I can only imagine how I would feel and I feel like I would probably have a similar mentality to begin with where I would feel like my life is over and then I would kind of have to accept it because it is what it is and you can't change it. Um, you know, there are things out there that help to prevent outbreaks and then there are different medications that you can take if you are having an outbreak and you know, it can kind of help essentially like nip it in the bud. Um, you know, as far as the actual physical living with it, having to deal with, um, having to deal with actually having outbreaks and stuff and the pain associated with that. Uh, so, I think it's just a mentality, you know? I don't think that it's gonna be impossible for you to find another relationship, but I do think that it's gonna take the right person. You're gonna have to find the right person. And honestly, you know, I'm not saying it's better <laughs> that you have it, but it might help weed some people out, you know? It might help weed out the people that maybe you shouldn't have had a relationship with anyway. If you find someone who, um, you know, is also living with herpes or if you find someone who is in the mind space of being able to work on a relationship and have a physical relationship with someone who does have herpes, then, you know, that could blossom into a really beautiful thing. Um, so I can only give you as much advice as I can here basically considering I don't have first-hand experience with it, but I don't want you to go through life thinking that it's it's done, it's over with, it's ruined, and just because it's not beneficial to you. It's not beneficial to you to have those negative feelings. <sighs> okay, I think this one actually has to be the last one already because I gotta go pick up the kids a little bit early today. I can't believe school's already starting. They start school in like a couple of days. What? It's outrageous. Hey Sarah, I love your videos, they inspire me and your story resonates with me, although I am an underweight girl. Hey skinny girl! Um, I've been dating this guy for eight months and I don't know. I'm black and he's half Mexican and white. He's one of me. He's very kind and he tells me I'm beautiful and smart and he makes me laugh, but he won't introduce me to his family or even tell him about me. How long have you guys been dating? Eight months? Mmm. When I met him, uh, when I met his parents and sister, he told him I was just his friend, even though we had been dating for six months at that point. 
He'll frequently ignore my messages for days, weeks at a time. He knows it messes with my mental health, yet he won't change. I don't wanna break up with him because when we're together, I enjoy being around him and he's a good guy. His friends are great and I don't wanna lose them either. No one else has ever showed any type of romantic interest, only sexual, and he doesn't even show any want of a sexual relationship. Well, this is getting confusing. He's the only person that has showed that they enjoy being around me and that I'm not a burden. I've been told that he's good and I won't be able to find better and I think it's true. What's wrong with me? How can I make this work? Currently crying in bed. Oh shit. Okay, I'm glad I opened this one. Okay, you said you've been together for eight months. He won't introduce you to people as his girlfriend or whatever. I mean, are you his girlfriend? Have you made that clear within your relationship? Because sometimes people get together or they have relationships. This is not to say that they are boyfriend, girlfriend, 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 boyfriend, boyfriend, whatever. This is not to say that that's what's happening, but they have relationships. Everyone I meet in life, I have a relationship with that person, right? So sometimes you have relationships with someone, but you are not on the same page. And maybe you're not his girlfriend, but maybe he is your boyfriend. Do you know what I'm saying? You can be in two different places and just have that miscommunication. That being said, stepping out of there, what? He has no interest in you sexually? Is that what I read? I feel like that's what I read. And um, also, he's the best you can get? Girl, no. Don't go through life thinking that. No, 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 no. You didn't know. That is not allowed. That mentality is not allowed. It's one thing to think this man is amazing. He's an amazing man because of this, 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 and this. Wow, he's just the best, right? He's the best. He's the best. Nothing's gonna get better than him. He's the best, look what I got, right? It's another thing to think, I'm the worst, I'm ugly, I'm this, I'm that. He's the best that this fuggo can ever hope to get. Heck no, those are two totally different mentalities and you got the wrong one. You need to, mm, no. Don't ever go through life thinking that someone who is clearly not doing the things that you like, who is clearly not making you feel good, who is clearly probably not the person for you, right? At this point, seems a little, eh, I don't know. Don't ever think that that is the best that you deserve and the best that you will get because of some fault of yours, because of, of what you look like or because of how you feel about yourself. It doesn't matter. Don't ever put those limitations on yourself that, well, oh, I only deserve crap because I am crap. Heck no. And you know what? One day you might meet the person who helps you realize that that's not the case. But until then, let yourself be that person. Don't let anyone else be that person for you. Because I can tell you that when I stopped having that mentality, because I did for a long time, and that's why I put up with a lot of the things that I did, because I felt like, well, I'm fat, and, and this is what I deserve, right? Well, I'm fat, and I got two kids, and I'm single. <laughs> and, and now, this is, this is who I am? Like, what am I really gonna get? And I had people, I had guys tell me, no one's ever gonna wanna be with you, right? One, because I'm fat, clearly whatever, like, uh, whatever. Clearly fat, but she's out here getting it, so whatever. Haters gonna hate, but, um, people told me, guys actually, there were guys that told me that um, I would never find anyone. No one would ever wanna be with me because not only, obviously, I have these, horrific physical just just abnormalities you know the size of my body and whatnot but also on top of that not only am I a single mom but my kids are black and no one wants a white girl after a black guys had kids with her so I heard that multiple times and this one time this guy that I was kind of sort of talking to for a little bit he he didn't say it, right? He was smarter than that. He was smarter than to actually let those words fall out of his mouth, but he alluded to it. And that was it. I'm like, man, someone so close to me, someone that claims that they care about me, whatever else, like they are sneak trying to put themselves up by putting me down and that is never okay. Like don't let that happen and don't let that guy do that to you. Don't let, don't ever let yourself feel like you deserve the crap that he's given you because you don't. 
Most people don't. Generally, people want to be good people and they want other people to treat them well. And if that's the mentality you have and that's the way that you're going through life, then all of this bogus stuff that happens to you, it's not, it's not just that it's not fair, but it's not deserved. And you can get out of a lot of these situations. So don't let yourself feel like this is the best you can get. Because, girl, I don't even know you. I don't know him. And I can tell you, you can do a hell of a lot better. So I'm going to wrap it up there. Something about this video got me a little worked up. I think it was still that first question. I'm still like, mm, let me find that guy. And uh, anyways, if you ever have any questions, comments, stories, or anything like that, you can always shoot me a message at asksaravargas at gmail.com. If you want to see more Ask Sarah's, as always, let me know. If you have any advice or anything on any of the things mentioned here, let us know down in the comments. Give me a thumbs up if you want to see more of these videos or just more of my face or if you just want to support because thumbs up actually help. And one day I'll explain why. But <laughs> um, don't forget to subscribe before you leave. Check me out on Instagram and Snapchat if you don't. And oh, and then someone did win that giveaway. Her name was Melissa. She already responded to me. And um, it's in my car right now. I'm gonna ship it soon, girl. If you're watching this, I'm shipping it real soon. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's it. Thanks for entering the giveaway. And uh, let me know what you wanna see in the next one. I'd be happy to go pick something else up and give you guys another giveaway. I mean, I'm happy to give stuff away. I wanna feel like Oprah as much as humanly possible. So you don't get a car, but you can get something else. So anyway, that's all that I have for you guys. And um, I hope you're having a really great day. And I'm going to see you in my next video. Bye, guys.